Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we are back with another brand new video. Today's video, let's be fair, you already know what it is, you saw the game, this is the game the entirety of Scotland football stops to watch, so we are here to discuss the old fun, but hey, at least we are here, we don't only show up when we win and we don't hide when we lose, so let's dive into it then and talk about the loss. And if I'm honest with you, this one does feel a lot more different than the ones we've done previously on the channel, especially the ones where we've been absolutely spanked silly and never had a sniff in. This one just feels different because it feels to me that it was completely self-inflicted. Because in yesterday's prediction video, we looked at this Celtic team and we saw just how unbalanced they were as a team, how good they were going forward. I mean, a lot has been said about this Celtic team, how bad they are compared to previous years, but like I said in yesterday's video, still going forward, they are as good as they have been when they've won titles in the past. They are very good at going forward, but defensively they were iffy, and I just thought that balance gave us a chance there to go and dominate the game, especially when you look at our side of things and how we've been playing so far this season and how strong we look as a team. Right from the Rangers goalkeeper right to the striker, there's a balance there and there's a formula that knows how to win, especially this season. But you know what we did with that formula? That formula there that's made sure that we've not been behind for one second so far this season, undefeated. That formula right there, we went like that. We threw it over the shoulder and went, let's change things up. And I'm sitting here filming this video three or four hours after the game's finished and I'm still utterly confused and completely baffled about the team that we set out to play against Celtic. Honestly, if you'd have asked 150,000 people yesterday to predict the Rangers 11, not one person would have done that. Hell, Mystic Meg wouldn't have been able to predict that starting 11. And it's just crazy to think that we started this season off with eight wingers on the books. We made jokes about it, how stacked we were with quality in the winger position, yet we go into the first old form of the season, locked the same amount of points with an opportunity to go top of the league before the international break, and we didn't play any wingers. When you just looked at that Ranger squad today, there was not one sniff of a balance. It was all over the place and there was no penetration at all for this Rangers team. We played right into Celtic's hands. And as crap as this is to say, and I absolutely hate saying this because not only do I love the guy, but I love the job that he's done so far as a Rangers manager and I genuinely believe this is the right man for the opportunity. He's going to go ahead and win a lot of things for us, but it's got to be said, Gerard got this game completely wrong. But before we go any further on with today's video and speak about these Rangers players in the way that they perform because again we just spoke about Gerard and yes he is to blame to a certain extent but so are these players they were on the park they had the opportunity there to show heart and desire but none of them did we'll speak about that all in a minute's time we need to take a brief second out to say credit to Celtic because I mean I don't think they dominated this game they never bossed this game versus Rangers again in my opinion you look at the stats 13 shots for Celtic 9 shots from Rangers but the key difference was the attacking quality when it mattered they were a lot more clinical they had 6 shots on target obviously scored the 2 goals we had 2 shots on target and we never came close to scoring I mean the closest we came to scoring was when Scotty Arfield tried to scant jam that's as far as we go on the scoring scale and the better team on the day was the team that won the old firm but I need to just look at this Rangers team and again I'm just so bitterly disappointed with just how they played yes everything we said there about tactics but where was that high press where was that getting in people's faces where was hounding and chasing people for the boss because I saw it from the Celtic end every single time one of our players got forward there's about two guys around them where was it from us where was these players that was willing to die and battle for the Rangers badge because that was an absolute pathetic display from Rangers. The work rate, the effort, everything was off in that game of football. I honestly got to the stage I was just starting to question whether or not they had been body swapped or something like that. Honestly, I didn't recognise any of them. I mean, Stephen Davis had a couple of good passes and I think he was probably the best at the midfield, but again, that's not really saying much. But even he was just randomly kicking the ball out of play. When you at least play five centre mids, you're expecting some midfield domination. You're expecting someone to connect a freaking pass. But none of them could connect. None. And speaking of connecting none, we need to talk about Joe Rebo. And I honestly, I feel a little bit sorry for him because he was thrown out in the left mid, out of position in his first old firm game. Not only is it his first old firm game, it's the first old firm game without Ryan Kent. In a bit of a while. We've got used to a certain way of style on the left hand side. A, a player that's direct and is willing to get people. Joe Rebo, who's a centre mid, was thrown at left mid to fill Ryan Kent's shoes versus Celtic. That 
doesn't make any sense to me either. Now this kid's getting a lot of flack, especially for his first half performance where yes, he seemed absolutely terrified to even get on the ball, but when he was moved back to the centre mid at the start of the second half, me personally, I thought he got better and started showing signs of what he can really do when he's played in the right position, but again, I understand for people it's very disappointed that it wasn't diving into challenges and getting stuck in, but again, I just feel a wee bit sorry for him playing so well with centre mid and then just being flung on the left mid trying to fill Kent's shoes. It was never gonna work. And if you follow me on Twitter, you probably knew how I was feeling going into this game of football because normally I take a picture of the starting 11 and I tweet it and I give my opinions and ask for yours. I didn't do that with the team sheet. As soon as I saw it, I went, we've shat it, we've went negative, this is going to be bad, and that's exactly the way it was. Everyone knew it when they saw that starting 11, let's just be fair, and that's exactly what we got. We set up negative, we tried to play it safe, we never were that brave, ruthless Rangers that we have been under Gerrard, and we got what we deserved, and that was a loss. And it's a crap feeling I need to sit here and say that, but that's fit, but that's life. There's going to be ups and downs, especially throughout this season. Am I now worried that Celtic's going to win the league? Is it league over? Of course it's no, it's one game hell, we lost the first old for me last season 1-0 away from home, playing pretty much the same negative crap style when you actually think about it. But we've got plenty of other opportunities to show just how far we've come under Steven Gerrard and I honestly think we will. But let's actually turn ourselves more to the actual fan or the game recap then, I should actually call it, because we need to speak about the goals, annoying as they may be to discuss. Start off with the very first goal that actually comes from Edward and... If you're annoyed right now, you're going to be annoyed even worse because I'm going to remind you that Connor Golton had the ball with not a bit of pressure on him. Very, very Joe Worrell esque. But the only difference between Joe Worrell's mistake and Connor Golton's mistake is at least someone was charging down Joe Worrell at the end of the day. Golton just simply passes straight to a Celtic player. That's one pass in behind us, and Edward runs through to score the goal. And a lot of things annoy me. Not only is Connor Golton pass completely needless and he's forcing it into an area where there's just Celtic players, but Connor Goldson, I was speaking up yesterday and I've been speaking up all season because he's a very, very important part of our defence, sorry. He's the vocal and he's the leader. A leader shouldn't be making that kind of mistake in a game of that magnitude, not even a little bit. And he's, if I'm honest with you, his distribution all day was absolutely terrible. But on the defending side of things, right about the 88th minute, he did put on a wonderful slide challenge to stop them from making it 2-0 before that. But again, he needs to cut out these mad moments because he's had a couple of scares so far this season and we've got away with it. But that one we never, and it's just unfortunate that it came against Celtic in the biggest moment of the season so far. And that was it for major chances in the first half. I mean, and we started Jermaine Defoe, and you think to yourself, if you're starting Jermaine Defoe, then you need to get Arfield close to him. It's going to need to be nice little one-twos, little reverses and everything like that. But no, we just decided, you know what? Jermaine Defoe's five foot six. The centre has six foot seven. Let's just punt long balls at him. Like, where's that? Where is that? Second half comes and goes and there is a bit of a response from Rangers and they do start to play a little bit better because we actually sub on a winger. That's weird, isn't it? You actually play someone that's willing to run in behind and things just start to look a wee bit more dangerous. But we just don't quite have enough quality in this game. We're not quite turned on enough and we don't make that opportunity. And it goes right to the 90-odd minute. We whip a free kick, trying to get into the box to try and aim at Nikola Katic. He loses out on the head on from the counter-attack. Johnny Hayes ends up scoring after his first initial shot is well saved by Alan McGregor. The defence, is the reaction's absolutely terrible. I mean, when Johnny Hayes is hitting that in the net, Tav's walking behind Alan McGregor. Like, what? What? This is an old firm man. Where is it? Another defender doesn't react quick enough to get there either, and he's got a simple tap in after, again, the save from McGregor. But there is one late talking point and it wasn't a goal from Rangers or even some kind of a response. It was actually a red card and a straight red card for Jordan Jones for a bit of a late shocking challenge on the Celtic player. Now, Gerrard's came out here and been very, very vocal with this one and if I'm honest with you, some of the things he said, especially to the Sky Sports one, not the Rangers TV one, can you rub me the wrong way? I mean, at least then he stick the boot in that much. Yes, you're disappointed, but the game never lost because Jordan Jones made a challenge in the 96th minute. That wasn't why the game was lost, so I just felt that was slightly need this, but yes, I agree, it was a red card. All I will say though is, if that's a red card, the Callum McGregor one on Scotty Arfield in the first half should have at least been a yellow, if it were actually, if that's the case, if it's late and dangerous, and one's a red, at least be a yellow, maybe even a red for McGregor as well. But I'm not really one of getting caught up in all this emotion saying, oh, the referee costs the game, because they never, lads. It was us. We were absolutely terrible, and Celtic were clinical when they needed to be. Madden didn't lose us this game of football. We lost it 
ourselves. And with all that being said, that's me all done and dusty for today's fan recap. Ladies and gentlemen, very, very disappointed. And I think I'm more disappointed than I have been in previous videos because when we've been smashed everything that, I've been disgusted at the performance. But I'm just so disappointed because we are better than that. We just never turned up and we shat it. So just before we jump over to Twitter, make sure to be getting your thoughts and opinions out there. And again, if you didn't mind showing this video any support by hitting a like button, that'd be tremendous because as you can imagine, whenever we lose the self, there's all this hate, there's all this abuse and all that. So it'd be absolutely tremendous. I know it's part and parcel with the game, but again, it's always good to see support, especially on days like this. So while you guys are getting your thoughts out there, I'll jump over to Twitter and read from the people. Now obviously there's no man in the match poll, so let's just jump right into the people's opinion then. And the first one comes in from Philip Ewan McGregor and he simply writes in spineless. Ross Watson writes in bad. Josh Kennedy writes, I've broken my finger CJ, that's how I feel after that. What the F was Gerard thinking today? Utter piss from start to finish. Ojo is piss, we need Kent. I know Jones got sent off, but at least he has the balls and shows a bit of passion. David White writes in, why alter a winning formula formation and tactics wise? Gerard himself said he believes the players had shaken off their old form fear, but then he overthinks it himself and alters things. Managerial naivety today. That is some tweet there, David. I completely agree. That's basically what I tried to say for the, the entire day of the recap. David's absolutely nailed it. I'm agreeing with him, mate. Coley writes in, terrible. Why change a formation that's working? Why Defoe? Why Steven Gerrard? Why? Billy Key writes in solid performance from Arfield, Davis and Shagger. Diarrhea from the rest. Andrew Graham writes in Golton always has a mistake in him. Callum Stewart writes we were due a kick in the balls this week. Still doesn't make it any easier to take. Nope, no it doesn't Callum. James Blackhurst writes in disappointed with most of the team especially Golton. Thought he was horrible. Lacked any whip and desire from most with performances like that. The league is as good as gone. Again, like I've said earlier on in today's video, that's way, way too early to say that. We've been utterly fantastic this season. Let's not get pure negative and just go doing that negative spiral and say it's all over. It's four games into the season. There's still a lot of football to be played. Travis writes in, Ojo was carrying a tractor. Remember that time when Ojo passed the ball out of play? We then won it back in our defence. We passed it to him. He bet two men. The crowd's up. Then he passed out of play again. All within 60 seconds. Doug Matt Jock Ratcliffe uh, writes in, hope there's no man in the match poll tonight. Terrible display all around. Biggest cheer was Morelos coming on. International break now. Let's hope the players come back fully switched on. No surrender. Mark McMinn writes in, effed it from the start. Gerard shat it tactically. No wingers at home against your biggest rivals. Nah, sorry. That's unforgivable. Celtic didn't even play all that great, which shows how bad we were. They defended well, though, and our passing was shocking. Looked like we didn't care. Yeah, you've actually got to give them a lot of credit because their defence was very leaky, and you see it's basically patched up with sellotape, yet that boy who's a midfielder, what's his name, Bitten? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. I always, I always do. He played a fantastic game, and he's a centre mid. That just shows you how bad we were. We never went at a defence that had a centre mid at centre half. We can talk about Joe Rebo at left mid. They had a centre mid at centre back, and he strolled it. We never got near him. George writes in, shows how much we need Kent. Barely any directivity. Far, far too scared today. It was mince. And the last one we did it come from Lackland. And he writes, awful. No words to describe that. And now Kent. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. You've heard from the people. You've heard from myself. If you haven't done so already, you know what to do by now. And as always, I've been CJ Novenary too. Thank you so much for watching. And bye-bye.